Alrighty, I hope this kind of stabilizes. <laughs> I've been moving this camera around all day. So I'm gonna be working off both these sheets today. Uh, I'm just gonna be doing it as quick as I can. And therefore, I have already pre-listed everything that we need to talk about. And we're gonna be talking a lot about um, the function of these and not so much the origin and insertion like the other muscles. Uh, because there's just so many of them and I don't really expect you to memorize these as much as the other muscles. Uh, they're important, um, but even myself, I haven't memorized all of these. There are good ways to memorize them. I just, I'm not the guy for the job. But what I am the guy for the job is, is explaining the anterior and posterior anabrachial compartments and the muscles found therein. So to start off, we have this pronator teres muscle. And the pronator teres muscle is going to be found right through here. Pre-marked, number one. Um, when you're looking at these muscles, you can actually, they're actually uh, very descriptive when you break it down. Pronator is the action. It pronates the wrist. So when we're talking about, this is supine. Remember, supination is where you can hold soup. Uh, pronation is where you drop your soup. I don't know. Maybe there's a better way to memorize that. But basically, it's flipping the wrist down. Um, and that's what pronating means. Teres, uh, I forgot what teres means, but we talked about the teres group up in the uh, upper limb. Um, I'm talking like your teres major and minor. This is not those at all. This is down here, it does pronation. And if you think about the action, you're usually going to find out what we're gonna be talking about. So you can't really pronate your scapula, but you can pronate your wrist. So we're talking about muscles that are gonna be located down through here in the antebrachium. I'll try to explain stuff like that as we go along. Number two, palmaris longus muscle is number two here. Falls down. Uh, this is like a broad tendon or what we would call like an aponeurosis, the palm. Uh, palmaris longus. Longus just means a long a long muscle and uh, palmaris meaning the palm so it also does flexion of the wrist uh, I mean not also it does flexion of the wrist if you were to flex that or contract that muscle you would flex your wrist so there's that um, number three is the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle Whoa, yes, flexor carpi ulnaris muscle. Is that what I'm talking about? Regardless, we're going, we're talking about the, forgive me. <sighs> I should just follow my list. Flexor carpi radialis, that's what we're talking about. The flexor carpi radialis does flexion of the wrist. Number three is found here. It's beneath one and two. When you follow that down, uh, it crosses the wrist, doing flexion of the wrist. Number four, it's found here, flexor carpi ulnaris, big chunky muscle, and that goes down. When we're talking about carpi, the word carpi, what what does that sound like? It sounds like carpals, right? Your, your carpals. So flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor carpi radialis. That just gives you description of where they're located. One is on the radius, one is closer to the ulna, and they flex the wrist, carpi. They flexor of the carpi. <laughs> Funny. Uh, okay, number five. This is sort of an intermediate group, but it's deeper. Uh, so they've separated it. Um, we're just gonna say it's part of the deep group. Um, flexor digitorum superficialis. Superficialis, describing the muscle as superficial. Uh, digitorum is your digits, and flexor, obviously, the motion. So we have flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor, now getting into the deep group, digitorum profundus, which actually can't be seen because it's deep to flexor digitorum superficialis. Profundus means deep, superficial means superficial, means uh, above deep. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just higher up in the muscles. So. Number seven, uh, let's move on. Flexor pollicis longus. Pollicis means thumb, and longus means long, so it's just the long flexor of the thumb. And then, of course, when we jump down to number eight, we have pronator quadratus. Quadratus just refers to the muscle's shape, meaning that it has four sides, 
and it pronates, meaning that you're turning from supine to pronation. Um, there we are, number eight. It's underneath everything. It's deep, and thusly we shall name it the, in the deep group, pronator quadratus muscle. Okay, moving on. Um, before we jump over to the other page, uh, we have number nine, which is your brachial radialis. This is part of the posterior compartment because it originates on the posterior side, uh, but it crosses all over to the anterior and attaches down through here on the, I believe, the radius. So uh, that muscle is going to do flexion, which would be a good indicator for you guys to write on this second page that this is going to be a flexor because the rest of these muscles are usually going to be called extensors. So I'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about the posterior compartment.